There used to be a gold rush in the US, and now we're slowly heading into a white rush. If you're not clear on what that is, it's lithium. This is what a lot of countries, companies, and maybe even everyday people are thinking about these days. At this point, this metal is so vital that imagining technological growth without it is nearly impossible. Take toys, smartphones, tablets, laptops, cars. While they aren't all made of lithium, batteries are everywhere. Even though there's a lot of lithium in the world, demand isn't keeping up with supply, and things could get worse in the future. Lithium reserves are spread across countries like this. In the heart of South America, Bolivia has an estimated 23 million tons of lithium. Nearby, Argentina sits with 22 million tons. Next up is the US, holding 14 million tons of lithium, and then comes Chile with 11 million tons. But this little lake, or rather what was found underneath it, could change the balance of power. Lithium is a metal, and its name comes from ancient Greek meaning stone, a stone that isn't exactly dense. In fact, it's so light that it's the least dense metal and the least dense solid element in the entire massive periodic table. Plus, lithium can float on oils and is one of the three standout metals that can easily stay afloat on water. Lithium is super reactive and flammable, a great heat conductor, has the highest heat capacity and a bunch of other cool traits. Basically, it's a unique metal with loads of useful properties. One of them is also its decent abundance on Earth. According to the U.S. Geological Survey in 2024, our planet has about 105 million tons of it. However, when it comes to producing ready-to-use white gold, things aren't looking so bright for humanity. The top producer is Australia with 86,000 tons in 2023, followed by Chile with 44,000 tons, and then China with 33,000 tons. These are the big players, and the situation in other countries is much worse. For example, Argentina only managed to produce 9,600 tons of lithium. In total, the world produced just 184,680 tons of lithium in 2023. Not a whole lot. You could ask, isn't that enough? Like we said, demand is higher than supply. In 2022, the world needed 9% more than it could produce. And if there aren't any major breakthroughs in human technology, the demand for this crucial metal is clearly going to rise. Forecasts say that by 2030, the need for lithium will hit 3 million tons a year. Now let's head to the U.S., a country that produced just 1,000 tons of lithium in 2022. More specifically, let's take a look at California's Imperial Valley. They've already pulled off a real feat there, beneficial not just for the U.S., but for the whole world. They turned a desert green, making it possible to produce thousands of tons of agricultural goods used both in the states and in many other countries across the planet. Now, looking ahead, this place might also help with the lithium situation. In the area, there's a geothermal field, a zone shaped by various geological processes, making it one of the easiest places to tap into the energy of the Earth's interior. By the way, this field happens to be one of the largest and hottest on the planet. Its temperature reaches 680 degrees Fahrenheit at depths of 5,000 to 8,200 feet. Of course, geothermal energy is already being harnessed here. There are 11 power plants that are part of one large Imperial Valley geothermal project with a total capacity of 432 megawatts. The figure's impressive, but the geothermal field's potential is estimated at 2,950 megawatts. There's also the Salton Sea in this area. Until recently, it was known only for the fact that at some point it started getting saltier, drying up, and then turned into a generator of toxic dust clouds, causing a large number of people to leave for good. What's lithium got to do with it? Beneath the lake, at a depth of about 0.6 to 2 miles, there's brine with a temperature between 482 and 716 degrees Fahrenheit, where you can find lithium at a concentration of 202 particles per million, plus or minus 20%. That's more than, say, in the Dead Sea, where the concentration is only 30 to 40 particles per million. According to various estimates, there are, attention, 18 million tons of lithium under the Salton Sea. This was confirmed as a result of drilling. It turns out that the lithium reserves in the U.S. and worldwide have increased. But reserves and extraction, as we've already figured out, are two different things. So the question arises, how do you even extract it? The conditions aren't great, 572 degree Fahrenheit brine, and it's under a lake. Luckily, there's a technology that makes it possible to do this. It's said to be used by the company Controlled Thermal Resources, or CTR for short, which began construction in January 2024 on a $1.85 billion plant designed to extract lithium from brine. With this technology, brine flows through tanks filled with ceramic beads. They absorb lithium from the solution it's in. 
When the beads get saturated, lithium is washed out with hydrochloric acid, leaving lithium chloride. This is an intermediate product that CTR plans to process on site, turning it into lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide. The latter is a powder ready to be processed and turned into the components used to make the final product. Overall, with this $1.85 billion, CTR is planning to create a factory that will do everything with lithium from start to finish. And you know it's a really good investment since the company says it'll produce 175,000 tons of lithium annually. There might be a question, why not extract lithium along with electricity? After all, the brine has a high temperature. The CTR company thought of that too. At every stage of the project, the station will generate 50 megawatts of power. Remember the 11 geothermal plants that are already operating around the Salton Sea? Well, they're also set up to extract lithium in addition to energy. As the president and CEO of BHE Renewables, the company that owns 10 out of the 11 local geothermal plants stated, they're already pumping 50,000 gallons of brine per minute at their facilities, so they're halfway to getting lithium. BHE Renewables doesn't even need to count how much lithium it can currently extract at its plants. Scientists from the Earth Sciences Department at the Berkeley Lab have concluded that the local power plants pump out about 21,500 tons of lithium per year. Yes, geothermal stations need modifications and technologies to work properly, or they could hire this guy. He graduated from the local high school in Palm Desert, then built a device to extract lithium in his parents' garage. It uses photons to excite orbital electrons, making it easier for some materials to attract lithium ions from water. It's not a given that even this way the local inventors will manage to pull off what they have in mind, since the Salton Sea has already been known for swallowing companies. Once the Symbol Materials startup even died here after developing a demo system to extract lithium from beneath the lake, then there was an unsuccessful buyout attempt from the well-known Tesla, after which headlines like this started appearing. If CTR and other companies succeed and they don't end up like Symbol Materials, then as bold as it may sound, the situation with lithium could really change both globally and in the U.S. To start with, as stated by CTR, if the Salton Sea is fully developed, companies will produce 600,000 tons of lithium per year. However, it's important to remember that in 2023, the entire world produced only 180,000 tons of lithium. There's still a long way to go, of course, and global production could grow, but it's unlikely any country will reach something like that. But if we imagine this happening, such an influx of lithium into the market would be really beneficial for the world, because right now, this metal is something that humanity's technological progress heavily depends on. By the way, lithium extraction in Salton Sea will change the world situation not just because of the amount of metal there, but also because of the method of extraction itself. How is lithium extracted around the world right now? 26% is mined from hard rocks like granites, aplites, and pegmatites in regular mines or quarries. The second method is used to extract 58% of lithium. It's mining with closed salt flats. This method is especially common in South America, with some of the main lithium suppliers to the market, Chile, Bolivia, and Argentina. There are a lot of salt deserts where you find salt flats, soil with a high content of easily soluble mineral salts. This brine is pumped from underground and then spread out over huge pools, after which the water evaporates, leaving only the high concentration brine. It's then pumped into a special facility for extracting lithium. But you know what the problem is with each of these extraction methods? It's the amount of waste. The thing is, mining in pits and quarries produces slurry, which pollutes the environment. You've probably seen those piles. It's a big issue, not just because they can take up space that could be home to some animal species, but also because these piles contain elements that can poison everything around them. On top of that, this kind of extraction uses a lot of water, about 40,000 gallons per ton of lithium produced. The situation with the salt flat method is no better. A lot of water evaporates, which is pulled from underground along with lithium and other elements. For example, in Chile alone, over 120 billion gallons of water have evaporated due to this method, and in the future, the consumption could reach 400 billion gallons. For every ton of lithium extracted this way, about 66,000 to 119,000 gallons of water evaporates. Plus, both of these methods take a long time. While this is less of an issue for mining than evaporation ponds, in this case, to get lithium, you have to wait around 12 to 18 months. And as if that weren't enough, evaporation ponds have another huge downside. The extraction rate is only 50%. 
This, by the way, is one of the reasons why lithium is facing price issues and therefore production problems. Lithium supply can't keep up with the increased demand and then the price drops with the arrival of new supplies. For example, in November 2022, the price per ton of this metal hit an all-time high of $84,015, then dropped to $13,650. And in the midst of all this, a technology is emerging that will make it possible to mine lithium from beneath the Salton Sea. Remember, they pump out the hot brine, then run it through various stages, and in the end, they get lithium. Well, the whole process, from pumping it out to getting the metal, takes a few days. So the U.S. gets a source of lithium that will allow it to react more quickly to the price changes in the market. Plus, of course, efficiency is growing since less money spent on maintenance. Geothermal extraction is also 90% effective, which means the amount of metal extracted increases exponentially. Plus, after extracting lithium, the brine is pumped back and can get enriched with this metal. This process can be repeated until the underground lithium is basically depleted. In the end, it's a method for extracting a crucial resource that's super efficient, long-lasting, and low-cost. On top of that, this type of extraction typically uses very little water, only a few thousand gallons. It might seem that this method is super eco-friendly, but constantly extracting lithium from the ground can also lead to negative consequences. Another problem was raised by environmental engineers from the Berkeley lab. Geothermal plants around the Salton Sea already produce about 84,000 tons of solid waste per year, and large-scale lithium extraction is likely to double this amount. About 75% of it will be silicon, which forms as a sediment from the brine and is harmless. It can just be dumped in a regular landfill. But there's also lead and arsenic, which will need to be disposed of at a special facility. Overall, this method of extraction, although great, needs a lot of research. Still, it's obvious that because of all the advantages it'll bring to both the U.S. and the world, this field's gonna grow fast. Because right now, you can't really imagine anything without batteries. And the vast majority of them are lithium-ion, which means lithium is required to produce them. Batteries for different toys, flashlights, tools, smartphones, tablets, laptops, all of these need lithium to be made. For small batteries in these products, of course, not much lithium is required, about 3 to 3.5 ounces per kilowatt hour, depending on the type of battery. But just imagine how many of these small energy storage units are made every year, considering there are already more than 7.2 billion mobile devices out there. But there are also big batteries, like home energy storage systems or industrial ones. Their numbers are constantly growing, and lithium is used for this too. Of course, it's worth mentioning that lithium-ion batteries are also used in electricity generation systems powered by wind and solar energy. According to the Global Wind Energy Council, by 2023, the total wind energy capacity exceeded 1 terawatt. And this growth isn't stopping because many countries are now aiming for so-called green energy. In fact, the same Global Wind Energy Council confirms this in its forecasts. By 2030, the total capacity will exceed 2 terawatts. The situation with solar energy is the same. In 2023, the total capacity of all installations already reached 1.4 terawatts. And from 2024 to 2030, the International Energy Agency forecasts about 5 more terawatts of solar capacity will be brought. No, solar panels and wind turbines don't always come with lithium-ion energy storage systems, but it's definitely not rare. That's why we'll need more and more lithium, and the discovery under salt and sea is a huge help. Batteries are also used in electric cars, and they're the biggest consumers of lithium. Imagine that, on average, such a car needs 18 pounds of lithium, and the number of electric vehicles keeps growing and shows no signs of slowing down. Governments of many countries are pushing for everything to be eco-friendly, Plus, it's often just more cost-effective for regular people to drive on electricity. Right now, electric cars make up about 14% of the entire market, which requires a lot of lithium. By 2030, the share of electric cars among all vehicles will rise to two-thirds, and if we look even further ahead, the percentage will go over 80. Can you imagine how much lithium consumption will increase? New cars with batteries plus replacements and old ones? And here comes the Salton Sea, which, according to researchers from the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, holds enough lithium underneath to create 375 million car batteries. It's no surprise that CTR, building its combined lithium extraction and geothermal energy plant under the lake, has already made a deal with General Motors to supply 20,000 tons of lithium annually. There's also the company Idlevolt, which doesn't even need to supply anything. It's announcing plans to launch a new company, StateVolt, with the intention of building a gigafactory worth $4 billion in the Imperial Valley. 
Giga for a reason. The company stated it'll produce enough lithium-ion batteries for 650,000 electric vehicles a year. Lithium is primarily needed for batteries, which are the foundation of technological progress today. As of 2024, 87% of the metal was needed just for energy storage of various types and sizes, and this dependence won't decrease. The table shows that by 2030, around 94% of all lithium on our planet will be required for batteries. What's hiding behind the remaining percentages? Batteries, of course, have overshadowed everything else, but it's hard to underestimate what else lithium is used for. For example, lithium alloys with silver, gold, and copper are very effective solders. Alloys with magnesium, scandium, copper, cadmium, and aluminum are promising new materials in aviation and space exploration due to their light weight. In both ferrous and non-ferrous metallurgy, lithium is used for deoxidizing and improving the ductility and strength of alloys. Lithium fluoride is used to make high-efficiency lasers and coloring centers and to produce optics. And the most important of everything else, which makes up a tiny percentage, is nuclear energy. Lithium is used for the burial of nuclear waste. It's part of a special enamel that contains highly radioactive plutonium. The isotope lithium-7 is used in nuclear reactors as an effective coolant. And on top of that, surprisingly, lithium, or rather its isotope, lithium-6, is used in thermonuclear weapons. In fact, the development of this kind of weapon was only made possible by lithium-6 deuteride. For example, the MK-17 bomb was made with lithium. In general, lithium is just irreplaceable in today's world, and its production is only going to keep increasing, especially in the US. How soon will this country become a world leader? We feel like it's going to happen pretty soon. And it's all thanks to the Salton Sea.